What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and uh, we're going to go uh, take a look at some cool stuff from this past week, and we pulled the clutch. It is the breeding season. As my kids say, let's check for eggs. So we went and checked for eggs on Sunday, and we found uh, some, uh, we found a clutch of eggs. So let's take a look, and we'll see what could what, what happened with those. I pulled them. It was one of those really big uh, females that I had, and you'll, what you'll see is that actually, when I pulled the egg, she still had a few eggs in there, which I kind of knew because you can see them in her. I put her back in and we came back later and, and we had a couple more eggs. So we're gonna take a look at that clutch and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna, I pulled some boas and we're gonna take a look at some, some cool boas because it's so nice outside. I wanna put them in the grass, let them move around, get some natural sunlight on them and just see how cool some of these boas really are. These are my grow ups. Some of them I bought, some of them I, I produced and uh, we'll take a quick look at some of these and uh, some cool stuff on this Monday afternoon. Hopefully you're having a great time and hopefully uh, this will be the foreshadowing of a cool week for you. All right, Aria, we have a clutch of ball python eggs. Are you yeah. excited? You are? Yeah, I am. All right, let's go see what they are, okay? Yeah. All right, Aria, now this is a honeybee. They call that a honeybee. That's a hypo, which is a recessive trait bred uh, also combined with the spider gene so we call that a honey bee I can't get it. it's okay Ari, Ari's standing on the thing watching it. and she laid a nice big clutch of eggs I think she's done Ari I, I'm not sure I think she's done she might not be but we're gonna pull her anyway and then uh, if she's got some more eggs she'll deliver them the eggs let's we're gonna grab these eggs from her however and she was bred by a really nice male which is a banana orange dream and she leopard yellow belly possible and uh that's she's also a visual uh, the male was also a visual pied so banana orange dream and she leopard possibly yellow belly pied also a possible head hypo which we'll see if it was hypo and, and she's hypo uh we should have 50 percent of the baby should be hypo since she was head possibly head hypo so we'll see could be a good clutch i'm um, looking forward to it we'll see what we got here let's pull her all right, Ari, I, there's a lot of eggs there. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. There's ten eggs, but she still looks to me like she's got a couple eggs left in her. So she's a big female. Well, she was a big female. Now she's getting deflated. But So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these eggs from her, and I'm going to put her back in before I wash her. I'm going to put her back in and leave her in there and see if she delivers any more eggs. And then we'll come back later, and we'll, set, we'll see if uh, how she did. Okay, Ari, is that a good idea? All right. All right, so Ari, we have uh, these eggs here, and you know what? This one, I can feel it's so soft, it was just laid. So I really believe that she's got way more eggs in her. She might have another two or three eggs. So we're gonna leave her in the tub alone. I'm not washing her off, leaving her in there. We took these eggs out for now, so that's less stress for her. I'm gonna candle these eggs to see you know, what orientation they're in. We're gonna put them in the egg box. We'll put them in the incubator. This one, I mean, so soft. These, these were obviously laid a little earlier. The, this was literally, if you can see it, you feel that, Ari? Very gentle. It's, it's really soft. It's like it just came out of her, and it hasn't even hardened yet. It hasn't even got any kind of a... It's very soft. Yeah, yeah, it's a soft egg, so... Yeah! Whoa, Ari, no, I'm shaking the eggs. So we haven't even candled these yet. So we're going to candle them. We'll mark them, and then we'll put them in the incubator. All right, Ari, we had just turned the lights off, and we, and we looked, and did you find all the blood vessels? Yeah! And what did we do to the top of the snake egg? We marked it, right? Yeah. And what's that mark for? For egg. Right, we marked the egg. So what's there? The little baby is at the top of the egg, the right? The little baby. That's right. So now we know we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten good eggs. And I think she's probably got about two more in her. We'll see a little later. These are good. These are going in the incubator right now. And be gentle, very gentle with those eggs, right? Yeah. But we don't want to damage those eggs. Those are good eggs right there. Oh, you turned it. We don't want to turn those eggs. We want to keep those little marks up. That marks where the embryo is. We don't want to turn them because then they could possibly suffocate. Uh, so we want the embryo side up where the little air bubble is so they can breathe. And Because there's, there's obviously air being diffusion going through the membrane of this egg. And uh, they can breathe. So we'll come back later and let's see if she laid a couple more. All right, what kind of snake you have there? A scalloped snake, that's right. Are you having fun with him? Yeah. Is he very smooth? Yeah, he, he's good massage. 
Yeah, he's giving you a little massage? Yeah. It's very cool. Wow, yeah, you like that. The, this guy's a cool one. A cool thing. He's got a very Ooh, smooth well, my yes. arm, Very no. smooth, and he just shed, so he's got a nice, smooth... Go go around. Yeah. <laughs> and he really likes you too. He's being very friendly to you. He likes we love our scale of snakes, right? He likes me. Yeah, we, I think we have one available still. Yeah. Is that guy the one available? Yeah. He might be. He likes me. Well, as you can see, the the scales get held a lot here, so they're very they're very tame. <laughs> I think I have one left on Morph Market. If you guys are interested, I think so. I want to keep you want to keep him? <laughs> We're going to hopefully produce some more this year, too. Hey, can right. I go to you outside? You want to go outside with him? Well, it's very hot outside today, so we're going to put him away, and we got to go. I think we have nap time coming up, right? All right, Ari Palumbo. Aria Palumbo, the snake handler here, the snake keeper, number two. All right, taking a look at my albino sulcata tortoises here. This guy is getting nice and big. Look at this guy. Beautiful red eye, gorgeous. I think I'm getting a little bit of pyramiding here though. I, I was feeding like a mixed greens to them and one of my um, neighbors told me that there was um, there was spinach in there and I didn't realize that there was spinach in there or maybe that there was, it would affect them. So I don't know if this is the pyramiding where the, 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 the you see those little, it's kind of getting raised up a little bit. So I, I kind of cut them back to just romaine lettuce now and we'll see if that helps. The weird thing is that the other albino kind of has it too. She's a little smaller, um, but the ivory, this is a T positive, doesn't have it. And they've all been eating the same thing and they live together. So I don't know. Not really sure what's, what, what the deal is, but they they look really healthy and they're, they're pretty beautiful. Uh, pretty amazing looking little creatures. Let's see this. T positive doesn't have a red eye, uh, but it's definitely, uh, I don't know if that would be considered like a, purplish looking eye but definitely the body is a uh, t-positive or caramelish looking type of thing this little baby here this is another albino you can see the red eyes these guys are gonna get nice and big can't wait one of my little pet projects that I just kind of do it don't worry about it but at some point these things are gonna get big enough and I can build them a nice cool out outdoor enclosure <laughs> All right, hey guys, the kids are dressed in their pajamas because we're gonna check to see if that snake had any more eggs, which I really think it, it, it was going to. Oh, there's eggs there, there's a few more. I was right, she was not empty. So we're gonna steal two more of her eggs, it looks like she's got, yep. Oh, there's two more eggs. They're right there, don't, I don't want you touching them, you can touch them gently. Okay, we're gonna wash her off. Shayla wants to look at the egg too. Put Logan, be very gentle with that egg. No, 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 no. put it down. Uh, Logan, <laughs> very gentle, okay? That's not an egg like you eat cooking a pot in a pot. All right, so we're gonna close up this. I'm gonna clean her out off. Logan, oh boy. All right, Logan, we, we marked the eggs. We candled them. You marked the top. And we're gonna put them into the egg box. We're gonna try to squeeze them in there, okay? So we have 12 eggs total. That's a lot of ball python eggs, guys. All right, I'll, let me, let's, hold on. Let's take this off very gently. Okay. Off. We got to find a nice place for them. Okay, we well, can't turn these eggs. So let's put one in here, Logan. Make sure that, hold on. All right, Wilf, well, let's, let's make I'll a little space. Out. Be careful, be careful. Can you squeeze it right there, Ari? Be careful. Let her put it in, let her put it in. <laughs> Guys, no fighting over it's the eggs. It's ripping, Dad. No, just leave it, okay. It's ripping, Dad. All right. No, it's fine. So that, it's just leave, no, leave it. Don't pull that off. Don't pull that off. So just leave it. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. There's a little piece of paper towel stuck to one of the eggs. That was all. So now we got 12 eggs, guys. That's a big clutch. Whoa. Whoa. That's like a that's like a boa, you know, litter right there. That's 12 eggs. Put that. Let's put them back. Let's not touch these eggs. We're, no, we're not holding anything. We're gonna leave them because we have to put them in the incubator. All right, I washed up the mama. This is, once again, my hypo spider or honeybee. This is a 2011 snake. This, this girl is 
10 years old and she just delivered 12 good eggs. She actually took off last year and I don't know if it was really because of her or if it was because I just didn't have a male that was mature enough with her. I always try to pair her with something different every year. Um, I love the hypo gene. I love hypo and, and spider together. That, that honeybee look is just awesome. Look, I mean, how many snakes look this awesome right after they gave birth as adults? Most adult bull pythons lose a lot of their luster. This is just a simple recessive and, and incomplete dominant mixed together. And there's so much potential here because what I bred her to, you know, is, is, is pie. So everything's going to be het pied and there's orange dream and there's enchi and there's leopard and there's so many main crazy things there. We should see some really nice looking babies. And with a 12 egg clutch, you know, we're bound to hit something hopefully. If the gods, if the odds gods are blessing us. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna close her up and we're gonna let her to get some rest and we gotta put the kids to bed. Right, Logan? Yep. You're in your pajamas, you ready to go sleepies? You have to have an ice pop too. Okay, you gotta have an ice pop, all right. <laughs> it's a beautiful day out. I had to take out my uh, couple boas here in the grass. Hypo Inca, that's the hypo gene, which is a, an incomplete dominant. One copy of it takes away some of that melanin. Inca, which is one of my favorite new uh, Central American dwarf boa locality. Well, not locality, but you know, morphs, I guess you could say. Uh, really crazy looking little circular pattern on the sides. The top's got kind of like a motley ish looking, with, with a lot of black in there. Obviously, the hypo has removed some of that black. And then this is het blood. So imagine this with a lot of red infusion in it. If we could even get this in like a super hypo form, this will be a really nice looking, can produce some nice little babies. Look, I love that, the darkness in the tail, even with the hypo gene in there. So, really nice looking snake. Put on some nice size. I don't know if he'll be ready to breed next year or not, but I'd, I'd like to believe so. Back here. Now this snake looks incredible outside. Oh my God. That's an IMG Motley, which we know when you combine those two genes, you get a black snake. But I don't, this might be the blackest of black that I have in my collection. Look at those eyes. This guy is a super powerhouse. He's also a parahet, meaning that he's either 100% het sharp albino, or he's 100% het for a bow woman care multi-positive. We don't know, we'll find out when we breed him. And he's 100% het blood. So double het fire opal, or double head, uh, just albino blood if you want to call it that. Or actually, no, no, not even, not even. Double head either paradigm blood or double head sharp albino blood. We won't know, depending on what that power head proves out. But the IMG and Motley together, in this particular combination, I don't know why it's so black, because usually you need the anery gene in here to get it that black, but this thing is just exquisite. Look at that eye. Look at the iridescence in the, in, the, uh, in the body type when that sun catches it. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous animal. Ugh. He has gotten so nice since he really blackened up. I got him pretty black. And he has just gotten better and better and better. I'm really happy with this guy. He's a little nasty, I gotta be honest with you, so I have to do the paper towel trick. That paper towel trick is you cover him with the paper towel and then you pick him up so he doesn't bite you. For some reason, when they don't see what's going on, they seem to calm down a lot more. That's my little trick. I've showed you guys that before. But this guy is just exquisite. Look at that. There's not, there's not a drip of anything other than black on him. This is the blackest boa I, I have by far. Because I have um, I have an IMG Annery Motley that's head for albino and it's got white under it. This thing is just all black. Why? I have no idea. I don't think you can predict sometimes. Now here is a really nice snake. This I got from my good friend Jeremy Stone. And these fire diamonds are fired up. When they're babies, they love to hiss and 
flare up. They think they're cobras. This is a hypo fire. Obviously, the super fire being the, the leucistic white snake. This is a hypo fire that's also a visual T positive, Burkestone line T positive. That's a Central American's line, more of a dwarf line. And look at that. You get the sight. <laughs> hey, look at that blue eye. These hypo fires get these blue eyes. They're pretty cool looking. And th that little um, defensive hissing stance, every fire I've ever had has babies like that. The big ones, the Colombians, always calm down. I haven't had one with a lot of Central American blood in it yet. Sometimes they can be a little feisty, but all mine are usually really good. So a lot of baby snakes have defensive natures and you, you, you know, you have to kind of just kind of earn their trust and earn their respect. I find the more I work with them, we had a really nasty one. One of the first fire diamonds I bought from Jeremy back in 2014, we called her Nastia because she was so nasty. <laughs> My wife used to have her at work around her neck all day long and she went from being the nastiest snake to one of the nicest ones we ever had. So I love that blue eye. If I can get in there without getting the camera attacked. That's the snake I was looking for. <laughs> this how we, look, I most of the time I'm at fault when these snakes escape because I leave the cage open a little, a little, a little bit, and they kind of just squeeze out. I take full responsibility for this female. I knew she'd show up. I have a snake-proof room here. <laughs> what a beautiful snake this is too. Talking about boas that we were looking at today. She's gorgeous. This is my Inca, hundred percent. T positive. Trying to breed her this year. We'll see. If she goes, hopefully I won't get struck at. I don't even know how she got up there. I've been looking for her like for the last hour and a half and she just, she must have been crawling around somewhere. These snakes are very, uh, now I know why they're such good hunters. They camouflage well and they move very quietly. The berms knock everything over. You find a berm escapes in this room, I find it in two seconds. Not the boas. Boas are really slick. Ball pythons just go and they move the to the cage next to them and they just hang out on the hot spot. They don't want to go anywhere. They just want to crawl up in a ball. All right, let's get her back in her cage. All right, guys, that's it for today. And uh, it was a, a little quick hit. We pulled the clutch of eggs. I actually didn't show you my carpet pythons that are actually hatching because they're still kind of halfway through. And then we really didn't get that many cool ones yet. I don't know if I'm going to get that many cool ones. This is not a big clutch of eggs. Uh, this was a first time clutch for this female. She was a caramel double head um, uh, moon glow carpet bred to the, a caramel double head moon glow. So, I mean, the odds would have been one in 64 of hitting the triple recessive full moon, but um, I doubt we're going to do that, but you never know. I still have a couple eggs to go. So far, I've seen a couple of xanthics, a couple caramels. We'll take a look at those tomorrow, probably. For today, though, I'm going to pull some, uh, you know, well, I. For <laughs> But today, obviously, we pulled a couple cool boas out, and if you want to see black boas, that might have been the blackest boa I've ever produced, or at least the blackest boa I have in my collection because I didn't produce that. That was a Mike Weitzman production. Also, Jeremy Stone with the amazing fire diamond still. I'm still trying to hit that this year. Fingers crossed we're going to produce our super, first super fires, if all goes well, but that's going to be later in the season. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoy some of the stuff when I show you just some of it. Cause I, I look, I'm a collector too. I, I buy stuff. I want to see new stuff in my collection. I can't produce everything. And that's the way it goes. You buy, you give back to the, the, the to the boa breeding community. You buy some of theirs, they buy some of yours and no one makes any money. We just got to pass it around and that's how it goes. All right. I hope you enjoy what you're seeing. If you are hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit that like button and we'll see you back tomorrow morning. <laughs>